are we going to mention and talk about and kind of cover again one more time the whole machine thing, yeah? Brett Crasher's movie. And more so around the subject of like hubris. Is it hubris? Is it arrogance? Is it self-belief? I don't know. But there was a period in time during Bert's promo for the machine where he was basically saying words to the effect, hey, support this movie because this means we're going to get more comedic movies in the cinema because a lot of these comedians, so a sub, not a lot, but I can remember specifically people like Tom Segura, people like Bert, people like Tim Dillon and a few others would say, and even Joe, Joe Rogan would lament the kind of demise of that, the comedic movie, right? The movie that you'd go and watch um, in the cinema that was just fucking fun, just silly, didn't really have a serious point to it and just was a belly of laughs from the minute zero to the end. And for some reason, maybe because of the, you know, politics and the way society has changed, a lot of those kind of racier, edgy jokes that you could insert and a lot of that sort of type of content is now something a lot of people don't want to do or is going to get you in trouble. But that whole kind of sector, or that kind of genre of movie has kind of died. It doesn't really exist anymore. And some of these comedians, podcasters like Bert, thought that they could somehow revive it because maybe in their heads, they thought their podcasts were kind of like IRL versions of those type of movies, which is bizarre, but I think that's probably where they were thinking. And also because they were, because they're somewhat popular in terms of doing podcasts that it would in a weird way um translate to movies but what we've seen with the machine opening box office and i've been surprised by it myself i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of surprised because i was the person on my stream that said with my whole chest with my whole big broad african man big black dude chest i said that I thought the machine would do well. Even though I'm not a fan of Bert, you know, I don't really check his content out. I don't think he's the funniest guy in the world. I just thought with the climate in movies being the way it is in cinema and whatnot, and, you know, people just longing for a bit of escapism, a bit of an option just to go and just turn their brain off and just be entertained, I legitimately thought it would do well. But clearly, I'm redacted as fuck <laughs> because the opening box office for the machine is fucking crazy when you think about like if you're like Burt Kreischer and you're his agent or you spur you look at numbers and shit and you because I'd imagine Burt's overall engagement across like all these social media accounts all these viral clips must be in the billions all right so sometimes I'd imagine a lot of these agents are like looking at it thinking mate you get like a million in bits of engagement and this here this there it's, it's equal up to a billion if you could translate just like 5% of that, that would mean you're going to make like... Duh, 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 duh. So I'd imagine that's what the kind of maths that they were doing. But the hard facts of it are, courtesy of this website called boxofficemojo.com, for Burt's movie, The Machine, for Burt's movie, The Machine, the domestic opening day weekend was 8 million, 8.9 million. Internationally, the movie made 174,000. So total... Oh, I guess world, worldwide? No, no, no. I guess, yeah. So total was um, 9 million <laughs> and 78. Like, can you imagine how much it costs to make that movie on location in another country and shit? Have Mark Hamill be, you know, be fucking Burt Crash's dad and shit. That must have cost a lot of money. And to only make an 8 million opening weekend is abysmal. Is abysmal. So it goes to prove that to be a movie star is actually a lot harder than you think it is um it's not easy to get people to go out and see movies and clearly um you know the business of movies is just complicated in general and to kind of make the final point the hubris that these guys had the arrogance that they had that somehow they could single-handedly revive a genre of of genre of cinema that maybe has died because maybe people just don't want those comedic movies anymore. Maybe the culture's kind of moved on. But to, to kind of, you know, believe that they could single-handedly pull it back into the cultural zeitgeist moment, whatever it's called, was insane, to be fair. Because so far from what I've been able to see online, people reviewing it, they're basically either saying it's a fun movie just to watch if you don't really care about a quality movie, or it's fucking terrible. And in the same token, they're saying the same things about Sebastian 
Mao Sako's new movie called About My Father. And I've heard recently, if you listen to Tim Dillon's podcast, you'd have heard him on his Patreon episode, basically tear this movie to shreds and say it was fucking garbage. He couldn't understand why it exists, why they did it and shit. And Sebastian, I think, is on the same level, if not more famous with normies than Tom Burt Kreischer is. Burt Kreischer is still famous, don't get me wrong, in his own regard. But I think Sebastian is like on that sort of like mainstream, mainstream level. And his movie about my father, his opening day weekend was only 9.2 million, also 9.2, well, 9 million only. Internationally made 824,000, altogether 9.8 million opening day. So these, both of these movies didn't break even. Both of these movies are categorically flops and both of these movies aren't going to spearhead the return of comedic movies in any way, shape or form. So all that stuff that they were talking about, oh, this movies might help revive this genre and bring back comedic movies. Actually, it's going to do the opposite. It's actually going to, it's actually going to make sure that movies that were in development are going to get canned. <laughs> That's the cruel nature of this shit. But it must be an interesting wake up call, isn't it? To be like, as famous as these guys are, and see that none of that shit on the internet or in that specific niche translates over to movies at all. Um, and I wonder what it is. I wonder if it's just that the movies just aren't good enough. Because that could also be the thing, right? Because there's generally movies that have come out. Like I mentioned Sisu. I don't know what Sisu did opening weekend, but that Sisu movie is fucking incredible. I think so, right? Um, I said it was better than John Wick. <clears throat> so it, you can obviously make movies for a small budget, be an unknown person, and it just catch. But the whole opening box, opening weekend box office thing is a whole entire different thing in, its, in itself, right? It's kind of like playing the New York Times bestseller book list type of event, type of strategy thing. It doesn't actually mean because you've got a New York Times bestseller that the book is good. It just means you maybe game the system in a particular way or at least like you, there's, there's ways around kind of becoming number one. So it's a different sort of vibe. So I'm wondering with movies, if it's just all encompassing, you have to have like a good strategy. It has to be an actually good movie. You have to have the right people backing it, non-stop promo. And imagine Burt Kreischer is not shy to promote. Burt was promoting this hard. He's been on every fucking podcast under the sun. I just saw recently, he's, he was just on fucking Drink Champs, a podcast I listened to, hosted by fucking Nori and DJ FN, right? Which is usually EFN, so which is usually a podcast about, you know, interviewing people within the hip hop R and B adjacent sort of sphere. Um and Burt Crash is on that, talking about himself and the movie and shit. So he pushed this movie hard. He promoted it as hard as he could. And still it didn't make a fucking dent. Like it didn't do a fucking dent in the grand scheme of things. No one fucking gave a shit. And it just is what it is, which is absolutely insane to see. Like the movie industry is fucking brutal and very, very difficult to kind of get it working. But I'm interested to check out both movies and myself. I'm still going to do a review. So if you're waiting to hear what I think of the movies, then, um, you know, that will be coming as soon as I can find the availability to watch it. I've been checking to see the machines been available after the fact in various cinemas around London, but I couldn't find any that was showing them. So maybe I might have to wait until it gets released digitally. And about my father, the Sebastian movie, I haven't actually checked yet. So maybe this might be available to watch soon. So I actually need to watch both of these to check the my review myself. But the opening day box office is illustrative that, hey, Movies are a lot harder to make than people make it seem as. And clearly, no one gives a fuck about podcasters going on fucking, you know, on the big screen. It's not that deep. It really, really isn't that deep. Um, I think they really overestimated their level of fame, really, in the grand scheme of things. But, you know, I guess you have to try. I guess you have to try. We were saying in the chat, imagine having a friend that was looking forward to seeing that movie, <laughs> Paris Bardo. <laughs> Matt Damon explained it in the video why movies are struggling in fears. Yeah, true, true. Matt Damon made a really good point about that, to be honest. That, that was a very good clip. Uh, we were just saying people only watch movies like that on streaming platforms now, not worth leaving the house for. Yeah, exactly. That's actually, <clears throat> that's, I think, I heard Burt Crasher mention the whole Tom Cruise um the whole Tom Cruise thing with his movies, Mission Impossible, what's the other one he did? Top Gun. And he used it as a justification to kind of how he approached movies. But I actually think the the reason why Tom Cruise has been, his things work is because those movie franchises, Top Gun and fucking Mission Impossible, they work really well in the, on the big screen. 
you actually want to see. It's like the Fast and Furious. Like, as great as those movies are to watch sometimes on a plane randomly, just as a kind of joke thing, they're actually better to watch in the cinema on opening fucking weekend and shit. Like, that's actually the fun of it. Seeing those movies on the big screen, IMAX, whatever it may be, is actually part of the experience and kind of adds to the draw and to the pull of it. But would you actually, you know, think that a comedic movie would need that? Not really, to be fair. <clears throat> so it was a real point that he made at the time, to be completely honest. But, you know, again, what do you know? What do 